Hello and welcome to Photographic Connections, the podcast where we create connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections and your host for this podcast. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Victoria Hack onto the podcast. Victoria is a British-born landscape, wedding and portrait photographer who now resides in Canada. We speak about how nature plays an important part in all the genres of photography that she works with, how she uses her intuition to create her images and how a spell of ill health taught her the importance of bringing balance into her life. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Victoria Hack. Hi Victoria, thank you so much for coming on the podcast this week. I'm super excited to to talk with you because I've followed your work on social media now for a number of years and I find it incredibly inspiring. So I'm looking forward to delving into to things with you today and, and just learning a bit more about you as a photographer and, and your process really. Um, but before we do that, I wonder if you could go way back to the beginning of your journey and explain what got you involved with photography in the first place. Okay, thank you so much for having me, Kim. I listened to your uh, podcast a few times now and I I really enjoy it. So I I really appreciate being asked to be here. Um, Okay, so uh, the beginning of my photography. um, So I think um, maybe if I go right back to the fact that I was really interested in art as a youngster. um, And I think that came about from having lots of kind of art and photography books around the home. Um, so, so that kind of started my sort of interest in art. And then um, we lived in, we, we moved quite a lot. I, you know, I, we lived in the UK, we moved quite a lot as a youngster. Um, and we lived in some really lovely areas. Um, we lived in Derbyshire, in Cheshire, um, Berkshire. We moved a lot. Um, and my fondest childhood memories are always of the places that we lived that uh, were very close to nature. So I lived in a tiny village in Derbyshire and um, a pretty small place in Cheshire. And I, those are my kind of fond memories. And my parents would take me out and we'd go walking and, and even just driving. And I remember my parents, you know, saying things like, look at that beautiful sunset. And um so that's kind of, I think that's kind of the basis of, of my photography. Um, and then as I went through school, um, one of the places we moved to, um, I was going to school in a different town to where we were living. We were renting a house until we found somewhere to live. And so I found that I didn't have any friends. You know, my friends were at school and I lived in somewhere where I didn't have any friends. And so I... Um, I started drawing, um, just kind of copying like Disney cartoon characters and things like that. Um, And um, so so my kind of love of art started, I started drawing things. When I was at school, I was studying um, art and then doing ceramics as well. And my kind of goal was to uh, go to art college and and be a fine art sculptor. That was kind of my, my main goal. And um, I did a foundation course in art and design for a year. Then I went off to university, to college and started a fine art degree, lasted for about three months and then dropped out because it just kind of wasn't what I expected. And so I spent a couple of years working, um, decided I should go and study something, but I wasn't really sure what. Um, And I ended up studying art history, um, but studying more uh, kind of non-Western art. So I did... uh, World Art Studies and Museology was the course. And my kind of areas of speciality were early Christian and then non-Western. So I really enjoyed learning about non-Western culture. So I studied uh, Amazonia and particularly the Inca Empire. And um, so I think I'm kind of of losing track a little bit here, but I think all of this kind of played into my photography as we move through, finished university, was then kind of trying to figure out what to do and thought, you know, do I go and live in Amazonia with a tribe for a while or, you know, what shall I do? And I ended up going to the local voluntary bureau and uh, just, you know, as an interim, trying to find out what I could do to volunteer somewhere. So I ended up volunteering for the National Trust and I, they sent me to Brown Sea Island in uh, Poole in Dorset. That's what I was living in Poole at the time. 
And so um, I started volunteering for the National Trust. I ended up working for the National Trust. I met my husband who was driving the boats to the island and then he started working for the National Trust. We were given um, a cottage on the island and we moved there and lived there for 10 years. And that's where I picked my camera up when I was working for the National Trust. So I would um, walk the island pathways with my dog when before I had my daughter and I would see the same pathways but with different lighting conditions, different weather conditions and I, I really wanted to kind of record what I was seeing and um, if anybody knows Brown Sea Island it's only 500 acres, it's a very small space so I was living in this tiny area for 10 years and covering the same pathways, seeing the same beaches um, and then so I really noticed how light was affecting um, you know the the landscape and everything and that was the the bit that, that interested me but I I photographed everything you know I photographed my daughter my dog the red squirrels um, but just all in this very small space and that's kind of the the, the basis of where my photography journey started um, and then in I think it was 2017 we decided to move from uh, Brown Sea. We wanted somewhere where we could actually go out for dinner and not get soaked because we couldn't get off the island very easily. And we'd sometimes go for dinner in a little boat and get very wet. And, um, so we decided that we wanted to go somewhere that you know gave us the opportunity to go out for dinner and stuff, but that was still very much kind of nature-based with a nice environment. And so we moved to Canada and I had family here already. And we live in a small town in Canada, in, in BC. Um, it's quite rural. We've got some lovely mountains and beautiful scenery around us. And um, my my business of photography really kind of took off um, here. So I don't know whether you want me to keep rambling or I can... <laughs> No, that is incredible. I mean, what a journey you've been on. You can see you have all these little pieces that you've kind of done throughout the years with your different parts of art, looking at your art history, your fine art, then this connection to nature. Of course, working for the National Trust is gives you that massive connection to nature, especially living on a small island like that. I mean, I've done short voluntary roles on, on islands and it's just been the most incredible experience. I can't imagine what it must have been like living there for the length of time you did. But you can really see that building up that connection to nature and really immersing yourself in it in that living condition has just mm -hmm. been huge to you and then bringing that together with your your art history I think you can really see that in your imagery there's a very like ethereal feel to a lot of your photographs and there's this massive like wow factor to a lot of them as well and they just feel so so magical so you can see that the sort of artistic side there that you've brought together with the technicalities of photography and you've kind of created this this um quite unique i would say um style for yourself so how has it been for you has it sort of happened quite naturally how you've gone and developed your photography bringing all these things together or has it been quite a, a thoughtful process that you've gone through no, I would say you hit it on the head when you said, has it been natural? Because I am one of the least planned people ever. You know, everything that I do is really intuitive and just I just go with what kind of feels right. Um, and so I've never, you know, I feel quite awkward when people ask me about, you know, business plans and things like that. There are really are very few. I don't, I don't really, I just do what feels um, right and if it doesn't feel right you know I've done things that don't feel right and then I kind of know it but for the most part I, I just kind of do what feels right so it's just been a really natural process and I think um, because I was on a small island and that's where my photography journey started I um, I didn't you know I couldn't join a photo club or you know it's difficult for me to get off the island to shoot sunrises in different places because mm -hmm. the boats had you know difficult timing um, and so a lot of what I did was on the internet because that's the only thing I could do. So I, um, I used, um, I don't know whether you remember the site DeviantArt was um, oh, yes, one of the yeah. sites that I used. Yeah. So I kind of learnt, or I, I looked at other photographers, I picked up things from them, I shared my work there. Um, and, um, you know, I got my kind of sense of community from that place because I couldn't get it from people really because I was a bit stuck on this island and so I've always used social media as a means of uh, kind of a, 
for, for my business and as a means of connection. It's just been a natural process for me because that's how it started. I didn't really have too many options um, to start with. So, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I love how you refer there to to your intuition and, and not really having any business plans because I think that's one thing I've always struggled with with my photography. Is you kind of go through this route of of wanting to kind of make a living out of it, and then you kind of mm-hmm. I've kind of sometimes been roped into these traditional roots of starting business plans and stuff, but I, they, they never work. But I realise that when I'm really true to myself and just photograph what I love and start things like this which just came to me one day and I thought I just I want to start photographic connections and when you start doing that it, things just seem to to flow don't they they become very seamless and things become very natural and I find particularly people who have a very deep connection with nature seem to be a lot more in tune with that intuitive sense than than um, maybe people that have that disconnection would you say that having that connection to nature really helps you with that that kind of feeling through life and making decisions? Yeah, I think so, for sure. I think when you spend a lot of time in nature, you, you realize that well, you see, you see things decay, you see things be born, you see the processes of life. Um, I don't know, I think it just helps you to realize that, um, I don't know, you can't control everything you, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm sort of, I'm finding it difficult to articulate, but um, definitely I feel like when you spend time in nature, it it, somehow I feel like things will work themselves through the way they're supposed to if you um, kind of go with what feels right and you're not battling something that just, you know, just doesn't feel right, you know. And I think when I was listening to your first podcast, when you were talking about your reasons for starting this, Um, with your nursing background and everything and your kind of wish to help people and that really resonated with me and I just thought you know this this sounds like a podcast that I would you know I'd be really interested in listening to and hearing people's backgrounds and stuff and how they kind of got into it I think it's Mm. uh yeah it sounds really good Oh, thank you. That's that's very kind of you to say. Um, I think it's it's really making me realise that I think the story element of, of 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 us all, like we all have this shared love for photography, and especially I guess with us with landscapes and nature. But every single person's journey has been so unique and different. But what I'm also finding is there's a lot of overlap as well, which is has been really interesting to to see. But I love how people are going off and having these tangents now. Like photography isn't all maybe as traditional as it used to be where everyone goes through the same things of doing like commissions and prints and things people are going off and branching off and doing so many things now with them um, the genre and it's it's interesting because they all often link to where that person has come from and I find it really interesting as well now because you do a lot of different styles within um, your work you know you do landscapes but you also have your weddings and your portraiture and occasionally editorial work as well but mm-hmm. the landscape and nature runs through everything you do so is that how because often people are interested in like weddings and portraiture. It's difficult for them also to be interested or have the same connection with other genres. But how, how do you manage to bring all these together and have the same enjoyment with them all? I think part of it is just the fact that I don't do the same thing all the time. And that helps to keep me um, interested. I know at one point, um, you know, as my kind of business was taking off, I felt like, you know, maybe I want to be a wedding photographer, you know, I can make quite good money doing this. And I found myself, you know, shooting wedding after wedding and sitting at my desk trying to edit them and then finding I didn't have time to spend with my daughter. And, um, you know, and then I would get to the end of the wedding season and just be desperate to get out into nature and not see anybody and not have to talk to anybody. And um, I now find that doing lots of different things allows me to you know, I can do a bit of weddings and then I can get away from people and go into the landscape. But I also sometimes find that if I'm only shooting landscape and nature stuff, I think we all come up against a wall sometimes where we feel uh, we're kind of blocked and we, we you know, we've, we're not quite sure, you know, how to move forward or, um, and I find that because I, you know, I may get to that place, but then I might have to go and shoot a wedding or I might have to do something else with my photography. It kind of helps me through those blockages as well. Mm. So um, I find a balance of all the different things that I'm interested in. And if I feel like I'm doing too much of one thing, I can step away and do something else. And I think with my photography, you know, 
when I was first starting out, like for most photographers, we are, um, it suggested that we kind of niche down and find out what we should, you know, what we're interested in and pursue that path. And I just felt like I couldn't really let go of the different things that I was interested in. Um, and I've actually found that in the long term, that has helped my photography business as well, strangely enough, you know, um, and even, you know, people saying, you know, you should have your social media looking a certain way and don't, you know, have pictures of a dog in with your picture of a landscape or whatever. But, you know, I just, I really, I just, I, I just couldn't let go of anything. And I just thought, well, I don't really care. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it, in some ways, actually doing multiple things has been what's kind of made somewhat of a name for me. So, you know, I, I just hung on to what I was interested in, really. Mm. I love that you've kept the interest for it all because a lot of uh, nature and landscape photographers do weddings initially in portraiture because they can't make money in landscapes and, and nature and it's sort of, sort of like a necessity whereas with you it's it's like you mm -hmm. love them all and you love that variety which I, I really love to hear and I love that that you've managed to kind of go off what's not maybe necessarily advised and have all these different things on your social media because it, it's you and it's like you say it's worked for you and I, I love to hear that because we get told all these things all the time of what we should be doing and shouldn't be doing but actually it's your work it's your body of work why do you need five different Instagram profiles for your different parts of your business it's all you and yeah, yeah as I say, you have the landscapes and nature incorporated with your portraiture and, and often your, your dog imagery as well. So you can see the crossover and it's all so, so very clear, I would say, which is, is beautiful to see. Yeah. And I think um, just going back to your question, you know, you I think you're asking how they link. Were you asking how they link together? I think. But I think um, I find that the nature aspect is something that runs through you know, most of what I shoot, you know, if I'm photographing a dog, I, I, you know, I love photographing a dog in a landscape. If I'm photographing people, the environment that they're in is quite important to me as well. And I love it when wedding, you know, couples ask me to shoot their wedding because they've, they've found an amazing location and they want to be photographed in it. So, um, the nature aspect of things runs through you know, most of my photography, even the portraiture as well, it's really important to me. Mm. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, wherever I live as well. I, you know, I have to be somewhere where I have access to the outdoors. My environment has always been really important. I've I've done a little bit of city living, and I it's it's really it's not for me. <laughs> It's, mm. it's not my thing. <laughs> it's really good to be aware of that, isn't it? I've kind of found I've just moved back to the part of Scotland that I was brought up in because it inspires me so much, because it's so much more connected to nature than what I was living before. And it's like we know deep down where we need to be, especially as creatives, to be creative. And I love that you've always kind of stayed true to, to that. And I guess, you know, moving from, from England to Canada, how have you or how did you kind of find that in, in your evolution with photography? because of course there's some overlap in some ways but Canada obviously is so much bigger faster broader so much more locations and a completely different in landscape in many respects so yeah how has being mm -hmm. in Canada do you think really influenced your work um, I think certainly moving from a tiny island that I was on for you know 10 years and then moving to Canada with these vast landscapes and very few people in comparison I remember when we first moved here I think we got here in late September and it wasn't very long before we started to get snow. And I just kept thinking, where are all the people? Like, there was just nobody around. Um, and I, I now know that they were kind of up, up mountains, cross country skiing and things like that. But I was just like, where is everyone? And it mm. felt very quiet and a little bit lonely to start with. Um, but um, I, I, just to having just these vast landscapes to photograph with not, not too many people around, um, has 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 been wonderful just access to the mountains but actually when i look at a lot of the photography work that's coming out of the uk now i i miss you know the uk woodlands and the bluebells and um i've been to scotland a few times recently with workshops and it's so beautiful um i mean it's a wonderful landscape as well um but i think just the space of canada and i think in terms of um business there are fewer people and perhaps there's less competition as well here mm. um so i think that may have have helped things a, li a little bit um yeah 
So mm. I, yeah, I, th- I just think the fewer people, the the vast landscape. Um, yeah, and it plays very prevalent in your imagery. There's there's so much incredible like mountainscapes and uh, lakes and stuff in, in a lot of your images as well. And you can really see that connection. I know you go out a lot, judging by your, your Instagram with your dog, and you just immerse yourself in these gorgeous landscapes. How do you find that, you know, that daily exercise of, of walking a dog and relating that to your imagery? Because a lot of like kind of landscape and nature photographers will say that time out with their dog actually is so inspiring for them as well. Do you find that as well? In your work yeah definitely i mean i find just getting out every day with jack is um is really helps um certainly during the pandemic i think you know being stuck at home and then doing those local walks not being able to go very far it really reignited my interest in smaller scenes as well um and i find myself as as my business has grown sometimes i'm even more kind of stuck at home you know i'm stuck here editing i'm stuck here you know photographing different things i can't get away as much as i would like to um so photographing those smaller scenes just going out with the dog um with absolutely no expectations i'll often just take a little tiny kind of a little backpack a little kind of bum bag thing um with maybe one camera you know and a lens on and just walking, no expectations, just seeing what turns up. Um, and it it has renewed, it, it's kind of brought me back to when I was first walking the island pathways um, and really kind of reconnected with me with why I started my photography. And I think sometimes along our journey, we can get a little bit lost in, you know, what does landscape photography look like? What is, you know, the landscape shot? And I know I've certainly been in that place Um, But the pandemic and then coming back to um, noticing smaller scenes around going out with fewer expectations, um, that's really brought me back to why I picked my camera up in the first place with Mm -hmm. no kind of agenda. Um, So, yeah, it's, it's been it's been really useful for me, I think. It's good to hear you saying there, going out with with less expectations, because I often find it's when we have those expectations that, of course, it leads to disappointment sometimes. And not having expectations and just responding to the environment is how we can connect more more deeply to it. And there's actually a quote that I found of yours that you um, had said in in an interview once, and it said, the more time I spend in nature, the more I've come to to realise that we are intrinsically connected. There's no separation between us. And I, I just find that really spoke to me. It's such a, a deep, thought-provoking, almost statement that, isn't it? But you can you can really see that, I think, in your work. Sometimes when I look at your imagery, like I really feel like I'm there. And I think for a photographer to achieve that, usually they have to have that, not have that separation between themselves and the environment, be, be at one with it in order to connect with it on such an emotional level that it shows itself in the final image. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've I've found that, um, you know, I mean, we all have problems in our lives, um, you know, difficulties at different times. And I've found that um, going into nature is, and, and, you know, just having my camera with me, not necessarily taking it out of the bag, but just spending time in nature has been just the greatest leveler, the, the, the thing that has really helped me to um, just just put everything back into into balance um i also had um a period in my life when my photography business was getting going where um i was working really hard not really taking much time for myself um and i was beginning to feel increasingly tired and um just not feeling great and i ended up you know eventually at the doctor and they diagnosed me with parathyroidism which is um a strange disease uh, which is once they've diagnosed you it's actually fixable with surgery but I was feeling like an 80 year old I was really exhausted all the time um, and it was almost like my body was just saying you need to take some breaks um, and I was I was just putting everything into my business not you know if somebody asked me to go for a cup of coffee I you know didn't have time or I would feel like I couldn't go out for a walk because I you know I just couldn't spare the time it really helped me to realize my body was literally saying, no, you need to stop. Um, and since that time, I've made sure that I build in even, you know, I may be really busy, but I'll make sure that, you know, I'll have one day that I'm going to get out and do something that I want to do with my camera or 
you know, not feel bad that I'm spending two hours wandering around with the dog, you know, on a day when I'm probably going to be working into the evening on my computer, doing stuff to do with my photography. So it's helped me to, um, you know, to, that, that illness has helped me to realize that, you know, I have to take the time for myself. It really was like my body was saying, no, you need to stop. Mm -hmm. And so getting out into nature, giving myself that time, um, has definitely helped my sort of all round well-being and having the camera just makes me kind of just lose myself when I'm out there you know I stop thinking about what needs to be done I have to set reminders on my watch in case I have to be back for a podcast or something because I can just get lost out there and forget <laughs> oh I love that you made the connection there between your your illness and your body kind of telling you to to slow down and, and take that time for yourself and and to rest and rejuvenate because I think I'm kind of realizing a lot that when I start to feel unwell or something happens to me usually it comes from there's something lacking in my life or something I'm not taking time for and I think you know we do live in this world nowadays that we just feel this pressure I think and especially I guess when we've got our own businesses too is to keep going and keep thriving mm -hmm. and and keep pursuing everything because you know you don't want anything to dry up and you want to to make sure you keep everybody happy but in doing that we often it can be detrimental to our own health and yeah our bodies always seem to find a way of of making sure we stop and we slow down and yeah. and in doing that we just seem to over time be able to to almost heal these things as well so I love that you you've made that connection there and it's again it's like like going back into nature resting rejuvenating being at one with it um, it's really beautiful, really beautiful to hear. And uh, one thing I think is really interesting as well that, that we spoke about before the podcast was that um, you say you're you're a pretty introverted person. And I find a lot of people that, that love nature and creativity as well are, are very introverted. So how do you yeah. feel that photography plays in with, with that introverted personality? Um, I mean, it, I think it's... Um... I think, you know, I do so, so many different types of photography and, you know, as a wedding photographer, you know, you, you're expected to be kind of, you know, lots of energy and, um, and you know, I can, I can do that, I can bring that. But um, I also find that having a quieter approach, you can, you're a listener usually as an introvert, so you do a, a lot more listening. Sometimes you can understand your clients better. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, 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 I can understand how people feel in front of the camera when they're struggling as well. Um, and I do the, you know, the people photography and then the nature photography is where I will come back to kind of rejuvenate myself. But I've found that as my career has progressed, I'm, you know, I'm having to be in front of people more and more, um, you know, speaking and, you know, these things are just, you know, I don't find them easy at all. As I mentioned to you before this, my brain just kind of goes blank sometimes. Um, I do find it quite difficult to um, articulate um, some of the things I want to say. But I think, um, you know, the photography is my expression, if you like. So, you know, that's where I put my feelings that I can't always articulate. So sorry that you're having to try and drag them out of me today. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean you know I, I I you know I think as introverts you know being out in nature is it's just wonderful isn't it like it's uh it's just a wonderful rest and especially you know it's a wonderful balance for me with the busy kind of people photography that I do it's just my place of refuge really Mm, so that yin and yang isn't it like you say getting that balance yeah. ensuring you kind of have both sides of of the coin as well yeah no it's brilliant I love that you spoke there about photography being like your your expression almost like it gives you your voice it allows you to to express yourself because I, I imagine well you know every art form is the same isn't it and I guess there's always been that there is that debate almost in photography a bit just now about is photography an art form or is it more of like a technical pursuit but I love that that you can really see in in what you're doing uh, that that creativity element definitely comes across um and how, how do you find it Kim just as a you know somebody who has also professed to be an introvert how do you manage to do you know the YouTube and this kind of mm. you know podcasts and things how do you how do you find yourself able to do that? Because there's lots of people I've spoken to who've said they would love to do it, but they just find that they, they just can't, they can't bring themselves to. 
It's interesting when you I've heard quite a few people that do what I do also uh, confess to being introverts and I think it's I actually had this conversation with somebody the other day I think when I began YouTube I was incredibly shy like people don't realize it now when they meet me but I was painfully shy I couldn't speak to anybody um and I think YouTube gave me a voice because speaking to a camera was great because while I find it really difficult in the beginning I was able to say and express myself without that that initial kind of um, dialogue back to me. Now, of course, when you're putting yourself online, you open yourself up and expose yourself to all sorts of stuff. And of course, I have had my fair share of, of uh, difficult comments and things to deal with over the years. But you also get a lot of positive um, stuff back as well. And mm -hmm. you kind of realise over time that the more true you are to yourself, the more you speak, the more you vocalise, you, you find yourself. And for me, in my late teens and early 20s, I was constantly ill around my throat. I always had tonsillitis. I developed an abscess. Interesting. Oh, interesting. I developed an abscess and I, I had to get my tonsils wow. out when I was 21, which isn't recommended because um, it's not very safe to get it done when you're an adult because the risk of bleeding. But I had no really? choice. But I realise now looking back, almost what we spoke about earlier about your body giving you a sign, I had mm -hmm. all of this stuff stuck inside of me that I couldn't say because I was so painfully shy. I also didn't have an outlet. And YouTube gave me an ability to find that outlet. I had a way of speaking and expressing myself, maybe not the traditional way, but a way of doing it. Yeah. And over time, all these things just, just cured themselves because it was like all this stuck energy was suddenly out there and it had an outlet. Um, and now I still have my moments of being shy, especially in groups. But in one-to-one -one interactions, I'm pretty confident now, which... Mm -hmm. You know, if you'd asked me that kind of six years ago, I would never have thought that. Um, but it's like the same almost with, with the photography. Like, as you said, it gives, it's your expression that kind of gives you that, that expressive means. And for me, video has been that. It's given me my voice and combining yeah. that with the visuals of photography. So, yeah, it's not easy. And I don't think any introvert would ever say it is easy. But it's like anything in life. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. And... I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I like to believe we all have our own individual paths and there's certain things that we're meant to kind of pursue and, and, and go down that route. So this isn't for everybody. Not everybody could do yeah. YouTube or podcasting. But if mm -hmm. you have that niggle inside of you that says, you know what, I'd like to make videos, but I'm just, I don't know how, I'm a bit shy or I'd like to do podcasting, but I don't like my voice or something. It's like, but there's something inside of you telling you you want to do it. So try it's hard to try but try and you just don't know where it'll lead so that's kind of yeah that's kind of my story there and, and how I've managed to overcome it I guess yeah I know yeah. um with when I was first um because I I'm a Nikon ambassador and when I was first mm. asked by Nikon to speak for them you know I was desperate to do it because I really wanted to work with them but just the thought of having to do this, you know, speaking was just absolutely terrifying for me, but it's something that I, you know, I, I pushed through it because I, you know, I wanted to do it and I, yeah, I hear you, you know, I'm, 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 bat I battle with it regularly. I feel like I, you know, I really need to do it. I really need to uh, practice at it, but it's definitely not, not an easy thing. But no. yeah. And especially like things like public speaking and that is a totally yeah. different um, yeah. kind of kettle of fish, isn't it? It's, it is, it's, um, you know, but I think you even hear people who do, you know, public speaking professionally, you still hear them saying they have that nerves before they go on. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, even me sometimes, sometimes some of my guests on the podcast, I can be really nervous before I, I, I click record. Some people I don't right. get nervous at all for some reason, but some people I get really nervous. And yeah. if I get asked to speak at like a camera club or something, even if it's over Zoom, that nerves start going because... It's very different to speaking to a camera. And it's like, but what's going to happen? Do you know, <laughs> like, what's going to yeah. happen? Yeah. But I think, you know, we, we all feel that definitely. It's something that well, we, a lot yeah, of us... Yeah, we try and rationalise it, but it doesn't, somehow it doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> it's really hard. No, no. And I, I know I've done a lot of reading around it. And uh, um, basically what I gleaned from that was that you have to push through it. Like, you just have to do it. But it's, uh, try not to make too much of a mess in the process. <laughs> I guess that they say, don't they, that um, you kind of have to push yourself out of your comfort zone to, to grow in life. If we constantly stayed yeah. in our comfort zone, we wouldn't get anywhere. Like we'd stay with the same yeah. problems, the same issues, the same places. And you just, sometimes you just, you just have to do it. Even if it's scary, you just have to do it. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's it's great that you were able to push through that and, and be able to, to do that, that, that talk for Nikon, because that is that is a daunting mm-hmm. thing and, and you managed it, which is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, kind of managed it. I think I, I, think I kind of managed it. <laughs> It's been, I was actually going to mention there about um, you being an icon ambassador and also you've had a lot of your work published with uh, you know the BBC and Outdoor Photo Mag and stuff like that and you, has this been, you know, you said at the beginning kind of that a lot of your marketing and where you've done your work has all been through social media so have you kind of been quite lucky in just posting your stuff out there you've been able to, to go on and, and get some of your work noticed the way that you have? Yeah, I mean I'm again going back to the really uh the the lack of planning with my business i never even follow up where business comes from you know i know lots of people track where their business has come from and i i just i i never really do any of that stuff i just kind of it just sort of comes in i just and i do you know i use social media quite a bit um that's probably my main you know my main means of, of marketing really you know I don't I, I, I don't do much else and it and things seem to just kind of trickle in and get busier all the time which uh, you know I certainly can't complain but um, yeah I, I, I'm not really sure where half the stuff comes from I just kind of put, as I say put out there what feels what feels right and then things seem to come in so I'm, yeah. I'm quite lucky in that respect but I certainly you know I, I certainly just try to you know i've been asked to to partner with different companies and um that that, that just don't actually feel quite right and i i know i've made a, a few mistakes in my past but i think um i i i really think quite carefully about whether or not this is a partnership that i am you know wanting to make does it actually feel right to me before mm-hmm. i jump into things um, and I think when you're first, you know, out there on social media and somebody offers you some money for something, it's very easy to to say yes and then, you know, perhaps promote something that really isn't isn't your jam. But I think if you if you kind of hold out for the things that really mean something to you um, and, and the companies that maybe you do really want to work with, that that's what I've done in the past and it seems to have worked quite well. Mm. That's great advice, sir, because I've definitely um, done the same in the past. You get the odd you know, thing that might come through and you say yes to it. And afterwards, I always regret it. Like, even though I have money in the bank afterwards, I'm just like, it just didn't <laughs> feel right from the off. Um, but I'm kind of yeah. same as you. I mean, I'm, I'm not a Nikon ambassador, but I am a, a, a Nikon um, creator um, within um, oh, the Europe. Cool. Um, so it, it's nice because you know, when I got that opportunity, it was like, this is incredible because I've been using their cameras since day one, you know, so it's yeah. incredibly authentic to me because I've yeah. never used any other camera brands. And it's just such a beautiful relationship to have, to be able to work with, with brands and companies that, that you genuinely use yourself. And mm-hmm. yeah, um, but yeah, I think we, like I say, we've all kind of been there of saying maybe yes to things that we may not want to, but I love that because you've kind of, gone back there to speaking almost about the authenticity thing it's like you you feel inside if something is right for you or aligned with you and we all do I think but so many of people and we've all done it at some point in our life will say yes or go off in paths that aren't fully aligned with us for one reason or another mm-hmm. but it's almost like if we could find a way of just being completely true to ourselves all the time imagine what life would be like I just wow <laughs> I know yeah yeah I mean it's uh it's um, something, you know, whenever something comes up, any new opportunity, I always just kind of let it sit with me for a little bit first, just to see if it kind of feels like the right thing to do. Obviously, mm. you know, chatting with people as well. But uh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. that's- yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And kind of the last thing that I wanted to maybe delve in with uh, with you is, um, I guess, almost your editing process. Not in detail, of course, but how do you get the, the balance right between being out there with your camera and, and the time you spend editing? Because I feel like your images have a very, as I said earlier, a very almost ethereal feel to them. And of course, the, the weather conditions are doing a lot of that for you. But how mm-hmm. do you approach them from an editing perspective to create almost this 
otherworldly beautiful scene that is just so real in many ways but also magical at the same time because that's something that a lot of people struggle with they see a beautiful scene they photograph it and then it never quite looks like what they wanted it to so you know you've obviously perfected the your ability to do that so what's been your kind of process with that thank you i mean i i feel just generally like nature is kind of magical Mm -hmm. um but i think so so trying to bring that feeling into my images is is you know something that i'm often trying to do but i um, I will try to, when I'm in a location, try to kind of feel the location and not just, you know, think about the technical aspects. That can be difficult when you're first starting out because obviously you need to understand how to make your camera do the things that you want it to do. So there is, you know, that time when you are pretty obsessed with the technical part of getting things right. Um, but once you've kind of mastered those basics, I think you can then allow yourself to be a bit more intuitive about it. And I know for me, now that I do understand my camera for the most part, you know, I can have a very intuitive connection with my surroundings. So I try to absorb how it feels when I'm there. And as I say, it's not, you know, it isn't always possible, you know, to sometimes the wind is blowing, it's really freezing cold, you know, you're, it's really hard to press the buttons on the camera. Um, You can't always feel like it's magical. But um, when I get back to, uh, to to my office and I'm, you know, looking at my images or when I come to editing my images, I will often do that when other family members have gone to bed, maybe have some music playing um, and try to relive the moment. And even if in the moment I was struggling with the elements, I try to feel what it felt like. And sometimes I only feel the landscape at that time. I couldn't really feel it at the time of being there because I was, you know, as I say, freezing cold, Mm. battling the wind. But then I'll feel it when I sit with the images. And then when I come to editing, I try to um, think about things like, you know, uh, was it, you know, did it feel kind of soft and uh, a little bit kind of, uh, moody in the distance and how you know how am I going to accentuate that so whatever it is that I'm, I'm I felt I'm trying to accentuate that feeling a little bit more so that the viewer can feel it as well so it's really just trying to to, to make that feel a little bit stronger mm. um, so I think that's kind of my essential sort of processing but I I'm I'm always trying to uh, bring that sense of kind of magic that I feel in the landscape to my viewer when I'm editing. So I'm just trying to enhance that a little bit. Mm. I love that you spoke there about feeling because I think that's that's almost the key, isn't it? It's something I'm definitely starting to, to realise. It's like, you know, what did you feel in the moment? Because how, how you feel then kind of is how you end up photographing your image if you you know if you feel a certain way you want to then portray that in your image but then like I love that you Mm -hmm. come home and you say that you know you put on the music and you almost like relax unwind get back into that scene and and remember it for what it was or how you felt it to be and then create that final image that that says what you want it to say based on you know bring all the technicalities together both in camera and in editing to to produce that I think that's that's so beautiful and I I did I had a conversation with somebody the other day about um music and how you know some hertz of music make us feel certain ways and I was like I've never understood it but you know you just know that certain things make you feel certain ways and she said you don't need to understand it she said we've been kind of programmed to believe that from a practical perspective we have to understand everything but you don't as long as you can feel it then that's what matters and you've just kind of reiterated that there yes and I I I think that some of us sometimes we feel bad that we're not feeling it at the moment of trying to capture it because it you know sometimes it is really hard you know you are doing you know the you're doing the things to capture the image you are maybe struggling with the elements with the rain on your lens or whatever it is there's all these different things to think about and I think sometimes people feel like you know they feel bad that they didn't have that feeling but you can kind of recapture it when you sit with the image later Mm. um so you know I think that not every landscape photographer is out there feeling the moment you know sometimes we're battling you know in the elements but you know it is possible to kind of feel it 
later on and try to bring that out in your imagery and then you know having some maybe some music playing that um you know kind of is inspiring or has that same kind of mood and even you know i'll find just watching movies that have a similar feel or something can help me to uh to kind of bring out feelings in my images as well I love that. They even spared me now to play more music when I'm editing my images <laughs> and just see what sort of effect that it has. What, you, what you're going to play. You could yeah. play some heavy metal and see what that does. <laughs> <laughs> no, but especially some of these like really sort of tranquil musics, you know, that, that kind of make you feel relaxed and unwind and or, or I guess whatever you are feeling in the scene, of course. But I think there's, yeah. I, I'd like to believe there's certain music and certain genres of music that, that bring out our creativity and bring out that feeling and I think it's it's nice because sometimes I just sit and you know just edit without much going on it's it's nice actually to bring in the whole sensual experience because that's one thing I I speak about when you're out in the field mm -hmm. you know not just what are you seeing but what are you you feeling what are you smelling what are you hearing sometimes yeah. what are you even tasting and try and bring that in to your image but I don't always think about that in editing which you've made me really think about that now so thank you I think you can set up the whole you know sometimes you know if you know bring your glass of wine you know make make the time for yourself to sit you know if you've got kids you know have them be in bed you know or you know have that space for yourself just to sit quietly shut the door lower the lights have a glass of wine play some music and then you know, that can really help to kind of, um, you know, bring out, bring back the feelings or help mm. you to, to feel the feelings that maybe you, you experience, but you, you almost couldn't, couldn't, you know, notice them at the time for one reason or another. Yeah, beautiful. Because I know I do that with my YouTube videos. I try and think, what's the feeling I want to, to showcase here? Then I'll pick, you know, music tracks to go with it. But yeah, I know I love the, the thought of doing that with, yeah. the, with the photo editing as well, definitely. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, I could literally speak to you all day. I feel like there's so much um, that we could we could delve into, but um, I think we're just going to have to to round things up now for the, for this at a time. Um, but it's, it's been wonderful to speak to you, Victoria. There's been a lot of nuggets of, of wisdom and inspiration in, in this conversation. Um, and for anybody that would like to see your, your beautiful images for themselves, where can they, they go to, to find your work? Thank you so much for having me, Kim. It's been really lovely. Um, so uh you can probably well you can google me that's probably the easiest but my name is quite difficult to spell um, <laughs> so it's victoria with a k and then my last name is h double a c k it's a bit weird but yeah you can you can google me i have a website um i'm on social media facebook instagram twitter um you should be able to find me out there and thank you again kim it's really much appreciated brilliant well thank you for your time it's been lovely so yeah thank you so much victoria and um all the best with the future of your photography business Thank you and you too. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this week's podcast. It really does mean the world to me. If you'd like to get further involved with the Photographic Connections community, including accessing our community Zoom catch-ups and our monthly live webinar, you can find all the details at photographicconnections.com. And now that this podcast has come to an end, there's only one thing left for you to do. It's time to pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover.